Right, mate, it's Sean. This is a podcast for adults, so don't be a muppet. Take a break if you need one. Otherwise, I got what you need. Everybody and welcome to yet another Patreon mini exclusive episode zero type deal. Last time, actually, you'll know better than I will, Josh. How are we releasing these all at once, or are we releasing them like one after another? I think it's one at a time. It's one week, then the next. I, uh, by this point, people will have already heard Marks and Max is doing whatever they're up to. I'm- Max has had a great time. Had a great. We got to see Max at a ho- another uh, a Halloween party. Of his own throwing. Oh, fun. You go watch it and you'll see what that's about. Oh, that sounds cute. But yeah, just like last time, we're doing another one-on-one for you guys to get a, a little bit of a snapshot of a particular important point in our uh, kindred's history. And for dear old Sean here, while his history as a kindred is relatively still new and there's not a lot compared to like a couple centuries or so, mm. there's still plenty to pull from and a very important night that Sean has blurry memories of at best and isn't even entirely sure what what went down, even if he tried to sit down and think about it. I mean, Sean has blurry memories of most important nights in his life, so... Exactly. That's probably the hard part about being a kindred. You can't blurry memory yourself anymore. Mm, Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, you could, I guess, if you fed on some drug addicts, but we don't see Sean... Well, no, his friends are drug... Yeah, I guess he still has blurry memories, yeah. Definitely found a way around that. (laughs) Of course it is. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and dive in, and we'll see exactly what Sean is up to. The very first thing we hear is low thumping, rattling music. The, the wooden door in the door frame is so loose that the rattling of the wooden, the metal up against the door frame itself almost dominates the actual baseline that is coming from the apartment below where Sean sits. In this studio apartment that has a kitchen and a bedroom is all one room and a tiny bathroom off at the side, we don't see Sean on the couch that is in the room or the couple of bean bags. We see him splayed out on the floor, staring up with a blunt hanging from his lips. His hands are up in, uh, in front of his chest and he seems to be fiddling and playing with them while his two legs are kind of at a perfect V from his uh, waist down. He's not alone in this room. Two other figures are chatting, sitting on the couch, a male and a female, and then one is also sitting on the uh, beanbag, similarly blankly staring off, but this time at the rattling door, not at the ceiling like Sean. Who these people are, are all new faces to our listeners. These aren't familiar friends of Sean's that we've seen in season one, but of a time long past. Sean still has a heartbeat here. His veins run with warm blood, and the color of his flesh is still present and easily identifiable. Sean is still alive, and this is a similar, familiar night to Sean. On a TV sitting in the background, a game of Call of Duty is just sat there, frozen. We're 10 years prior, 2010, so that's like, is that Black Ops 1? Probably. Yeah, just sitting at a start screen, kind of blankly in the corner. Minutes pass before eventually the rattling at the door is also meshed with someone furiously hammering away at the door as well. Nobody in the room acknowledges it, Sean. You're the only one, you're probably the most sober one in the room right now, and you're usually well aware of that. Sean says like, hey, and then a minute goes by. There's still someone banging at the door. You're probably snapped out of the the, the zoning out of with another boom, 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 boom. (laughs) Oh, fuck. Uh, I guess I... Yeah, we're busy right now, brother. As they go back to making out on the couch. You're not sure when they went from conversing to making out, but at some point they did. Yeah, that wasn't like that when I left them. Uh, uh, yeah, he he kind of groggily kind of pulls himself up, pushes himself up, falls to the side, then like get, finally gets up straight and like s- s- shuffles his feet all the way to the door and then just kind of leans on it and and I just un- undoes the latch. He's not feeling particularly safety conscious here or anything. 
Yeah, it's fine. You're not uh, particularly in a safe neighborhood either way. As outside the windows, as we as we see Sean stand up and we can get a good look out on past his shoulders, it's plenty of just two to three story brick apartment buildings. Plenty of them boarded up, shattered windows, and lots of uh of garbage on the sides of the road with a couple abandoned cars where tires have been taken off of and some have been graffitied on. But Sean goes over to the door, unlatches the chain lock as it dangles down and clatters with the wooden frame, and the door creaks open, the rumbling of the music on, uh, beneath the floor now kind of shaking Sean a little bit as he opens the door. When you look outside the door, you're met with three figures, but only recognize one of them, the one up front. You only know him by the name of Drago. He's a Russian bloke, and he clearly, clearly loves Rocky, but he, uh, he gives a smile to you because he's not built like Drago at all. He's built like a black-haired, stubbly, overweight man who's five foot four. But you only met him once, about two weeks ago. He was uh, introduced to you by one of your other friends. And you look over your shoulder and you're like, no, it wasn't any of them. At least mm. you don't think it was any of them. But you remember him clearly because he had some of the most pure shit you have ever touched in your entire life. And it was a great night. The thing is with Drago... He gets to choose who comes with him. You don't get to go looking for him. He just knows if he likes your company, he'll come looking for you again if he wants to party. And here, sitting at this door, you don't know how he got this address, there he stands. And behind him, you also notice two others. Another young man who has his hoodie up and seems to be just kind of looking off to the side. And a young girl who's got a, uh, a very bright uh, light blue hoodie on, kind of flipped up and overly large, maybe two sizes too big for her. The hoodie itself has like little dog ears that kind of ha hover and hang way too uh, low over her face. And um, she's got a bright, like a bright neon green um, pleather uh, pants on. Okay, these people clearly like to party. Very obviously. And again, Drago, so as you open the door and you see Drago, he just gives you a kind of a shit-eating grin. E Sean. Yeah, hey, uh, d d dra Dragon, dra Drago. Hey, hey, man. He gives you a, a, a wide smile at Dragon. He's like, hey, maybe I'll start calling myself that from now on. You're welcome to it. You're a hard man to find. You go around here, uh, you party with a lot of people. It's, I'm just really popular, you know. Uh, well, I, I, you're part of the reason for that. I, 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 I enjoyed that night, man. So, uh, uh, hey, what, what do you want? What do you want? He actually smiles. He's like, about that night, let me ask you something before we get down to the brass tacks of where, uh, what I need from you. Have you ever had a night like it since? Uh, I, I've been chasing a few pretty wild nights. That's, that's definitely top three. Well, my crew liked you a lot. You were a real chill to hang out with. You were a blast. You had us cracking up at some of the shit that you've done in your freaking life at this point already. So we want you to come hang out. Maybe after tonight, if you really enjoy yourself and everybody likes hanging out with you, maybe you're a regular. Come to my place every so often. I give you my address. I let you know when shindigs happen. That sounds like a pretty sweet deal. Okay, I'll be on my best behavior. He smiles. He looks over. He's like, these aren't invited, though. It's just you. Is that cool? He looks back at them. They're still making out on the couch, and the guy in the beanbag is... The guy in the beanbag is still staring at uh, where he was before at the door. It just happens that you're all in the doorway now. He's just staring clearly through you, not at you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is not a problem. It's a bit of a slow night. You know, I've barely got enough for myself. And He just, he cuts you off. He places his rather large hand on your shoulder and gives you two rather firm pats on the cheek. He's like, here. And he reaches into his pocket. And he takes out a piece of paper and a pen. And he starts scribbling on it and just kind of jams it into your chest. We start getting ready and start, well, we start jamming in about an hour, hour and a half. Good shit doesn't start happening until about uh, like two-ish hours when everybody starts showing up. Be there. Sweet. I will. He cla claps you again on the cheek and uh, turns with the rest of them. Can, as you go to shut the door, can I get a wits awareness? Yeah, sure. And this is mortal, Sean. This is, this is mortal, Sean. One success. <laughs> uh, the only thing, as you go to shut the door, the only thing you really notice with one success is that it seems like the person with the dog ear hoodie, she kind of like hovers around for like a second longer than the rest do. Like notably, as you go to shut the door, she only seems to move when you're about to shut the door. I pause like the other two have already left. Yeah, though they were leaving and she followed after them, but she kind of like waited like an extra second before she joined them. Yeah, I, I like probably close the door a bit too close and then I, I open it a creak and I poke my head out. As you open it, she's already walk, started to walk. 
What what do you say? Hey, I can get get you what you need. Uh, as you say that, she doesn't turn around. Her walk turns into a slight jog as she catches up down the hallway. I hope I'll see you later. I slam the door. You know, they, they, they turn the corner as you slam the door. Sean looks, turns around to this room of degenerates, as we'll call them. And what exactly is Sean going to do for the next hour or two? As he looks to the address, he, you don't recognize it. You're not familiar with the street. It's not anywhere nearby at the very least. Sean's just going to probably be a bit more active than he normally would be. It's just like doing a little shimmy. Like he, he goes to the, the like big but broken hi-fi in the corner and like puts on... Fuck. He puts on Hypnotize by, uh, <laughs> by Biggie and just starts like uh, getting himself ready. It takes two seconds because he hasn't got any money or any decent clothes. And he like starts just he lights up another spliff and plays COD for a bit. That's how he gets ready. He's, uh, he's enjoying it, bringing his nerves down. He's excited, but he doesn't want to come off as excited. So, you yeah. know, he said you kind of light up and chill and, and enjoy it. Uh, eventually, though, it's time to go. And Sean isn't particularly afraid of cabs at this point for any reason. So do you, get, do you call a cab? Would Sean call a cab? Because it's not within walking. Well, I mean, it could be. It's just a long walk. Yeah. Hey, cab? He just calls a cab. Yep. So we see him pull out his garbagey phone that's still even out of date for 2010. Mm. And uh, you give a call to a cab place because the, uh, the cab apps don't exist at this point in time. And so as you give it a call, eventually a yellow cab does pull up and you you're kind of hustle on in. And you're on the road for a good 30 or so minutes before you're brought to an area that is much better kept than where you're used to partying. Last time you were with Drago, he partied in your area of town. Though he surrounded himself with people that certainly had a little bit more money to play with than the people you're familiar with. He still hovered around your territory, familiar, uh, familiar playing grounds. Mm -hmm. Here, it's much different. The, uh, you are surrounded by skyscrapers everywhere. You're in the heart of New York City, down by Manhattan, where money flows much more freely than where you're used to, uh, where, where you're used to playing and sleeping. And as you are surrounding yourself with tall glass skyscrapers on all sides and cars front to back honking and beeping and people on the sidewalk, sidewalks mashed together, to this point, we probably see Sean dressed as he is, as casual as he is, starting to question how much money this guy actually has. Because as you start wondering where this place is, he actually pulls off to the side suddenly in the yellow cab and says, this is it. You look out the window and you just see skyscraper in front of you. It's an enormous building that could have conference rooms and offices and maybe at a restaurant at the very top, a fancy steakhouse. You can't really tell, but there's no numbers here. And as you look down at your piece of paper, you're on the right street. You're definitely in the heart of New York, but this can't be right. No, that's not right. Can, are, you, are you sure? He's holding his hand out for cash. He told me, and he looks down, he, he just kind of jams on his old, those, you know those old school GPSs yeah. that you would stick to the window of your car? He pats on that on the LCD screen, and he's like, that's the address, right? Uh, yeah. As you look up, you actually see it is exactly the same address. You, you brought people here before? What kind of people come here? I mean, uh, he kind of looks, this building here, this is, for, this is a fucking uh, office place. A lot of, you know, busy body suitcases, suits, that kind of thing. I don't fucking know. Oh. Well, uh... If you pay up, I got other people I gotta start moving around. The fuck you think I am here, your fucking personal I, tourist? <laughs> I jam not enough money into his hand, like, in a scrunched <laughs> ball, and then get out as quick as I can. <laughs> as you get out, and you, you can hear him, like, what the fuck? Oh, it's so gross, and, like, and as you kind of, like, slam the door shut. Uh, a few seconds pass as you hurry, and eventually the yellow, the window, you hear it roll down. He's like, hey, you fucking cheapskate, I had you, you said more! I'll get you by next time! As, you, as we see Sean, hurry up into the front door of this place. You open it, it shuts behind you, and uh, if you look over your shoulder, you see him giving you the finger as he drives off um, down the street. Clearly not worth the trouble. I, I blow him a kiss. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Taking a minute, whew, and just realizing where you are, you actually turn, and it is like any large office building in New York or any large city. A large lobby with a few TVs and behind what would be a security desk and elevators that lead up and down and stairwells that lead to other parts of the building. You look this thing up and this card up and uh, this not this card, this piece of paper up and down again, and it's just an address scribbled on a piece of paper. After a little bit of time, eventually a security guard at, at this time of night walks his way up and plops himself behind the security desk and kind of gives you like a what's up nod, but then goes to open a newspaper as he cross he puts his feet up on the desk. I'm going to ignore him and just start exploring. 
All right. We're, what do we see Sean do? I'm actually very curious. Do you start going in the elevators and going up and down? Like, what do we do? Yeah, I think I think Sean, like, how long have we got? We got, like, plenty of time before the actual party starts, right? Yeah, you've got, like, another, like, 30 minutes before you're supposed to be uh, there. He's, he's like, I'm, a, I'm allowed in here. No one said I'm not. So he just walks straight past the guard and, like, gives him a little salute. Yeah. He, the, the guard just gives you a wink and smiles. You just, where do you go? The, the elevators? Yeah, he, he goes to the, the elevators and presses the top button. You press an elevator and you wait for the elevator to come down. Eventually the familiar ding and the doors roll open. As you step inside, there are 50 floors to choose from here. 50. And as you go to hit 50, it does not light up. As you look at the, at the area, you realize, oh, there's one of those security things that you need to have a card to swipe first to pick certain floors. Do we see Sean just put his hand and go, yes, <laughs> all the way down it just to see what lights up? <laughs> so Sean if you like alright well fuck it then you see him put his hands on all 50 buttons and just all the way down and as you scroll all the way down to these things the only one that lights up is the negative 2 and as the negative 2 lights up the doors roll closed creepy basement and it begins to move downward it goes down ding from G to minus 1 and then minus 1 down to minus 2 as the doors roll open here, you're met with a large concrete hallway that branches off into smaller rooms, it seems. Looks like storage units as you walk around. Hey! <laughs> now you just shout, hey! <laughs> as uh, there's a minute, and you actually, can I get a wits awareness? Yeah. Should I take a negative to this? Because he's... <laughs> it's up to you if you think Sean's paying any attention. I'm going to take a minus one for the... The the spliff and the not really giving a shit. Perfect. Yeah, that's nothing. You don't hear anything. Your own foot, your own echo a little bit, but it's not like this place is empty, so it's not like a giant echo is filling the room. You wait around a little bit, mm. kind of stand nearby. Do you like open? Do you like go to like some of the things that are being stored? Yeah, he, he takes like a minute, but then after that, gets bored and starts. Checking the uh, the doors, corridors, like tries to turn on lights and stuff. Yep, you're just flicking on lights that are kind of, it's not like a dangling light bulb as though there's no money put into this place. It's more of like a, a light bulb in one of those metallic cages right. uh, that have like a, t a silver or a smooth surface to it. Mm. Um, just kind of lighting up each and every room as you go in. And most of it just looks like organiz organized cardboard boxes, some filing cabinets. And even if we see you kind of flipping open boxes and stuff and even just pulling out papers and looking, it genuinely, Sean wouldn't know what he was looking at. It looks like business papers, numbers, contracts, maybe. You're not entirely sure. Um, just a bunch of useless shit that, that Sean would be bored looking at after probably five minutes. Mm. Why? They probably could, Actually, out of curiosity, does Sh would Sean think, why am I allowed to go through this shit? Why is nobody protecting any of this shit? Would that be something Sean even thinks of, or is this not? Is this, he doesn't even know. He doesn't know. I think he would. It would probably be in the back of his mind, like someone fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> How long until Sean's like bored? Maybe fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes pass. You're bored. Where does Sean go? Back to the elevator. Yep. We see Sean kind of putting the box lids back together and. Just not necessarily re making it look like he wasn't here, but just kind of hurriedly kind of reorganizing things and heading back to the elevator. And as you go over to the elevator and you go and press the button, it does not light up. <sighs> he tries a few more times, like, click, 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 click. It doesn't even summon the elevator. You can't get it to come down. I'm fucking stuck down here. And he starts wandering around the corners. You say, you kind of shout it a couple times, hoping maybe the security guard hears it. Maybe hammer on the button a few times or even bang on the doors of the elevator in hopes that somebody hears something. And I've, again, another five or ten minutes will pass before you realize nobody hears you. He's going to go look for the stairwell. Okay. You go looking around, hoping that there's a stairwell somewhere nearby. Can I get, um... No, you know what? You would take your time. You're not going to hurry this. You're going to look. You're going to explore. You want out. Mm -hmm. There doesn't seem to be a fucking way out of here other than the elevator. There are no stairs. Kind of killing my buzz. Anyone down here? As he says it again, kind of killing my buzz. Anyone down here? Can I get a wits awareness? He's actually paying attention now. 
I figure. He's probably sobered up a little bit. Oh, that's a three. <laughs> that is a much better roll. <laughs> much better roll. <laughs> John, we see mingling around for probably around 30 more minutes, around the time you're supposed to be showing up to this party, which probably puts you in a little bit of a stress and you're looking around for a stairwell. At this point, maybe even moving boxes out of the way, maybe an air vent that you can climb out of and whatnot. Not that you're worried you're going to be trapped down here forever, but who says no to a Drago party? Mm -hmm. You've been there once and people know who he is by name. You don't want to miss this shit. I want to be there. I want to be one of the regulars. You could be out this way every night, but you find nothing. Eventually kind of piling through boxes and knocking things over. You actually knock over a, a stack of boxes that were kind of loosely put together and, and not nearly as organized as some of the rest of the stuff behind. And as you're moving it, most of it actually tips over and falls and papers slide across the concrete wall. Some go into the air and kind of float back down. But it's not necessarily the papers that catches Sean's eye. All these other cardboard boxes have looked absolutely normal. But behind all of those, there's another box. This one, not cardboard at all. It's a wooden crate that's seen some time worn away, parts of it chipped and splintered. But on the top of it, there's a weird symbol, kind of haphazardly painted, perhaps. It looks like a dagger of some sort, uh, ornate dagger or something. But as Sean maybe even looks to reach forward and get a better look at it, you actually hear a <clears throat> behind you. You did not hear an elevator come down, nor any sounds of anybody's footsteps. Oh, uh, hey, hey um, did you know the way out of here? As Sean spins around, he sees a rather plain looking man with scruffy brown beard and short brown hair uh, standing there with a white button down short shirt and uh, khaki slacks and some, you would call them dress shoes, but old, well-worn dress shoes that have seen better days. He gives a wry smirk and looks kind of over your shoulder and then to the mess on the ground. Uh, you got into some shit, it looks like, huh? What happened here, kid? How the hell did you get down here? Elevator. How'd you get down here? I've been down here doing some work. Sorry, I didn't hear you show up. And he actually bends down and starts scooping up some of the papers. I uh, take it you can't get back up then, huh? Yeah, how'd I get down here in the first... Someone messed something up, so... He actually kind of finishing up, um, picking up some of most of the papers, still some kind of scattered about, and he kind of stacks them up very neatly on a box. You can hear him tapping them to organize them and sliding them in a nearby box. He's like, no, no, people can't get down here unless they're supposed to be. Oh, do you know Drago? Oh, all right, yeah. Uh, he turns to you. Did he give you the address or something? Yep. I'm, I'm here to hang out and have a, have a good time. You don't look like you are, though. I just allowed Drago to use the place. I'm his inside man, and he smiles. Huh. Well, uh... What would you rather be doing high-end, high-end drugs? Back at wherever, and he kind of looks you over, no offense, wherever the hell you're coming from? <sighs> or in a place where the cops and the business people are all on the same payroll? Oh, I mean, wherever I can find them. <laughs> Not a good way to think, and he actually chuckles. But, uh, hey, your secret's as good with me as it is anybody else. <laughs> well, uh, he kind of takes a deep breath and hoists one of the boxes off the ground and piles it back in front of that wooden crate and finishes organizing the other two before he's stacking them nearby. He takes a, a moment to look you up and down. Oh, uh, you can call me, uh, you can just call me Larson. Hey. I, I grab his hand and, like, squeeze it tight and, like, flop it around. <laughs> he, yep, he gives you, uh, he tries to give you kind of a normal shake. He's like, uh, so, uh, like I said, he gave you the address? Did he give you, like, a piece of paper or anything? Yep. He actually reaches out his hand. If you don't mind, I want to make sure you're not making up a story. Plenty of people know that guy's name. I, I thought I was supposed to be down here. You said. I did, but I just want to make sure you're not telling some sort of story and somehow cracked open the doors upstairs and slid your way down. I know it sounds kind of crazy. but I know I'm, I'm skinny. I'm not that skinny. Just don't make me call security. Can I just see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And as you reach in and crack, pull the paper, paper out, yep, he pulls it open. Can I get a wits awareness as he pulls open the piece of paper? Yeah, that is nothing. Man, oh man, Sean, we went from <laughs> Max. Uh, we all recorded this in the same day, everybody who's listening. But Max was rolling crit after crit after crit after crit after crit. It was just, I could not stop the man. And Sean, it's zero, 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 zero. <laughs> so um, you don't notice anything. He just kind of looks a piece of paper, then folds it up and puts it and hands it back to you. 
All right, good. I just want to, like I said, I just want to make sure. Come on. And he kind of ushers you over to the elevator. Yeah, when he turns around, I, like, take a sneaky look back at that box. It's now behind a couple cardboard boxes, but it's still there. You, you get a good look at it. What are you trying to do? Uh... Nah, he, there's only two of us. He'd notice if it was... But I clock it for later. Yeah, you clock it in your mind. That seems important. Time. Yeah. As you follow him over to the elevator, he actually reaches over and simply presses the button. He doesn't need to swipe a card or anything. He just presses it. The button lights up. He takes a step aside and leans up against the wall, and he's like, it's going to take a minute. He looks up at the thing, at the number. He was up pretty high, and you can see it dinging down from 48 to 47, 47 to 46. He leans his foot up against the wall, takes a deep breath, and just kind of looks you up and down. So where Dra- a Drago pull you out of? Uh, Brooklyn. That's where the accent came from. I can tell. <laughs> he chuckles. What is it about you that he likes? I mean, I don't think I've ever heard your name brought up before. I definitely haven't seen you here before. Uh, well, I'm new. Um, that much is clear. Yeah, it's... It's because I'm, I'm so damn sexy. Um, he, he again le- kind of puts out another chuckle. Oh, uh, do you even know why you're here? Do you even know who you're partying with? What do you know? Like, you, just, you just take any invite and walk up. And now you can look up again, 29 to 28, 28 to 27. I don't take any invite. I, it's, half the time it's me doing the inviting. I just ended up in the right place at the right time. Are you joining us? Like I said, not my particular style, but I do allow him use of uh, one of the floors here. It'll be your first time seeing it. It's like an exclusive club. Oh, well, I mean, blow off some steam, have a good time with me. You'll know what Drago knows about me because, obviously, I'm worth knowing. If you're here, clearly. And he, he gives a, a, a smile. Can I get a, a, a wit's insight from you now? Okay. As he speaks to you. That is two successes. Cool. Two successes. As he's talking to you about, like, do you know why you're here, who you're going to be partying with, and you kind of give your answer of, like, eh, not really. You don't see this particular emotion often on people you hang out with. But he looks like he might be a little worried. There's definite concern. It's the way his face contorts after you kind of bring up the fact that you're not really aware. There's a, a, a twinge of, like, his eyebrows kind of come together in a worrying way and raise a little bit just for a brief moment. But then the conversation continues as though nothing is wrong. Looking back up, you see it four to three, three to two, two to one, G minus one, minus two. He pushes himself off as a, you can, he hears the ding of the elevator and he kind of just gestures for you to move in first. I do. He follows behind you and uh, looks over to the, uh, the elevator. Do you say anything? Oh, I thought you might say something. It looked like you might. I go in, and I'm just like, last chance. He follows in the elevator with you, and as he presses the door close, he's like, right, don't worry about it. Welcome to the censored room. And he uh, reaches over and presses 42 on the, on the elevator, and you feel, with a lurch, the elevator begin to rise. I like the sound of censored. Most do their first time here. I promise this is a night you have never experienced in your life. Yeah? That's pretty steep offer. I mean, I've been around a bit. If you're here, then Drago's parted with you a few times, I'm sure. But even the stuff he's given you then, I promise. And he gives like a deep, hearty chuckle. <laughs> it really is nothing like what you're going to have tonight. Enjoy yourself. Lose yourself to it. Some like to get nervous and they fight, you know, and they're, they're worried that they're getting in too deep, but just enjoy it. Ride the wave. It's the only way you're going to fully enjoy the experience Drago's here to offer you. Hmm. And if you want to come back again, he then just, he just follows that up with a shrug. Okay. Sean, not really used to the weird kind of heavy tone suddenly set before a party. The rest of the elevator ride is awkward silence. Yep. Eventually, though, floor 42 hits and the doors roll open. Oh, hi. It's me, Vera. While you're taking a break, take a moment to visit dieharddice.com. 
Die Hard Dice is a sponsor of this little podcast. They make what we do possible. During checkout, make sure to use the code STITCH-JAM and you'll get 10% off your entire purchase. And we get a little cut for our own resources. Mmm, sounds like we only roll with the best. You actually are are greeted with not a, uh, like a typical room, like a typical floor in a business building where it's hallways with conference rooms and glass behind glass walls and closed door conference rooms that are more private. All of that seems to be have completely stripped out. As you look to the windows themselves, the that's actually the first thing you notice. And you are, uh, as you step out of the elevator is that they're all blacked out, completely professionally painted to be completely, utterly blacked out. It's not something most people would notice unless they were here on the floor as it's so high up off the street. It's not particularly uh, standout ish. As you uh, kind of step in and gander, all the walls that would be here to indicate different conference rooms have all been removed. It is one giant open floor plan. The lights have been dimmed and replaced with mostly different candle lights in the different parts of the room and corners with uh, uh, tall, tall candles with depictions of art that you are totally unfamiliar with. Uh, maybe even walking over and passing some of the, new, the, the ones that are closer. It looks like bodies contorted with one another. Whether it's pleasure or pain on their face, it's hard to tell, but definitely some kinky fucking shit. That's for damn sure. And as you move in, you are surrounded by people who are partaking in some of the more hedonistic acts humans are capable of taking, uh, partaking in. A group of bodies mashed over a nearby um, silk pillows and, and sheets on a bunch of uh, uh, a beautiful corner with drapes hanging from the wall are making out while some are drinking and one person's doing a line off of the other person's chest. They're completely lost in the moment and are nowhere near aware enough to see you, even though you're maybe only a foot or two away. Over in another corner, people are gently conversing with one another very politely. And while there's plenty of hedonistic acts of drugs and sex happening around you, it's not at a volume that one would expect. Mostly when you're in parties like this that you would maybe even consider an orgy. It's loud. The music is thumping. People are having a good time. There's raucous laughter and conversation and moaning of orgasms surrounding you. Here, it's all very polite, kept under like the wraps and, and, and kind of con- and kindly carried forward. Somebody is fucking in the corner while polite conversation is happening just across the room. There's plenty of that to have around. The smells in here are wonderful. There's a smell of perfume and flowers, but over in a, in a corner where food is being served, the, the smell of freshly cut cooked steak completely fills your nostrils. <sighs> Sean, what is Sean's look as he finds, you know, this, this is like him as he's slowly walking into the room. All of this is being taken in. What is Sean's expression? How does he look with every step into the room? I think he's somewhere between dumbstruck and appreciative. I think he just kind of mutters like, yeah, I found my people. <laughs> oh, man. He just, just, like, slowly wanders and gawps at everything, like, <laughs> uh, how do I get in on this? Uh, does Sean find his way over to a group of people, or does he kind of wait for somebody to approach him? I'm, I'm curious if he would act like, I would say, a good comparison to the way I'm thinking is, like, me in high school, when I went to any dance, I was, like, awkward walking through, like, do I talk to anybody? Do I not talk to anybody? But Sean is, seems much more charismatic than I would ever be in that age. So oh, yeah, yeah. Does Sean just kind of, what does he do to try and blend in? I think he picks a corner where people are, you know, quietly chatting and they're clearly engaged in some other activity like they're, they're, they're doing lines or they're all smoking from hookers or that sort of thing. And like... He finds a space where he can sit down comfortably, like partakes in the activity and then just like slowly listens. Sure. Sean makes his way over to a group of four. Yeah. They're uh, all sitting on gorgeous silk pillows, cross-legged and surrounded and all having a conversation with one another. At least three of them are talking while one uh, leans forward as her her long hair falls uh, to cover her face uh, on a nearby, a nearby little, you wouldn't call it a table but like a little smooth concrete surface in the middle of all the pillows. And you can hear her over the conversation, the loud snort as she takes in a line. 
Sean walks over and sits nearby, not to to push in on the circle, but nearby enough where mm. he looks like he's at least eager to be a part of, of the conversation or at least eke his way in. But as soon as you sit down, the young lady who just took the hit actually looks up to you. She brushes her gorgeous blonde hair behind both of her eyes as her, uh, her pink tank top falls short of her belly button. And she just looks you in the eyes and she simply says, hey, cutie, what's your name? <laughs> Hey, I'm Sean Best. Uh, she, as you say your your, uh, your full name, she actually gives an incredibly polite giggle, bringing up her hand to cover her lips. What a last name! It's appropriate. I live up to it. Do you mind if I join you? She uh, looks uh, looks to you, kind of with a with a, um, a pitied a pitied look on her face. I'm sorry, sweet boy. Not yet. You're new here, right? Ah, uh, fresh. She looks over her shoulder, and towards the center of her room, there's a congregation of a good four or five people. She looks up to the congregation and looks over to you. You should head over there. And as she says that, you don't even have a moment to debate it. She's right. You should go over there. As you look over there, that looks like all the kind of people you should be with. Those are the people that, uh, that you should be with uh, and should have been with since you walked in this room. And so this woman's a genius. She knows exactly where you should be, and you stand. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you walk your way over. And what do you say as you says you stand? I'll miss you. And he, and he goes. <laughs> she just gives you a polite smile as you walk your way over and then continues talking to the people around her. As you make your way over to this huddle of people, you realize in the center, you couldn't see him initially because one, he's relatively short. And two, he's surrounded by five others, is Drago. He's wearing a gaudy as hell white suit from the top to <sighs> bottom with crisp, polished dress shoes and his hair is gelled back like he's from 1997. Just completely slick. His facial hair has not changed at all, though. And he just seems to be having a bunch of conversation before you make your way over. And as he looks up and sees you, and he's like, oh, Sean, my boy, I didn't know when you were going to arrive. Hey, Drago, it's so good. I thought I was worried I'd have to call a backup. We couldn't start without all of you. Fun story. I got trapped in the basement with one of your lackeys and he was gracious enough to say, oh, I, I let Drago use this place. I mean, obviously you own it, of course. Like, uh, uh, hey, what's happening? He, uh, he chuckles and laughs and he, 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 brings, he comes over to you and kind of gla- grasps your shoulder, though he has to reach up for it and he brings you in for like a pat. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, uh, no, I don't own this place. What the fuck do you think I am? Made of millions of dollars? You should be. He, he laughs. He's like, I have enough to make sure I have this place at my beck and call when I need it, but not enough to own the place. And you've been to the basement already? He just slaps you on the chest. <laughs> Perfect. We're heading back down. I, I just got here and I can, I can smell all those wonderful smells. I, we got like 10 minutes. When we're done, we'll be back up here and I promise you can enjoy your night. Uh. But hey, when you're part of my crew... Everybody got to go through a little initiation. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you can handle my shit. And then he pats you on the chest two more times. Okay. He, uh, he locks his arm under yours and he's like, you have no idea how happy I am that you're here, Sean. I, I'm happy to be here. It's uh, been a uh, low points until right now, you know? He uh, just pulls you down with his arm and he's like, if I may say. You were a special request. And he gives you a wink. Uh, Somebody out there likes you. They've liked partying with you quite a bit. Your name was dropped. You were wondering why I came to get you. Now you know. Ah, uh, okay. Well, um, I'm... Welcome to the club. And again, he reaches up and gives you a solid pat on the, on the, on the neck. But he lets his hand linger for a while. It's at that point, you're like, oh, God, fuck. Dude, this guy must have shit circulation. His hand is so cold. He's never, I mean, he's given you a couple pats before, but he's never really like clever. He never, no long term body contact. But now he just kind of gives you like a gentle, like, it's going to be okay. And his hand just sits there for a while. It's like your heat just getting sucked out of your neck. Yeah, I, I shiver a little. And I think back to all the times when various people have OD'd on things. I'm like, no, but he's still standing. <laughs> well, it's almost Halloween and it's cold. Maybe he just has bad circulation. Yeah. Into the elevator, all seven of you pile, and you see him reach over and press minus two. You look around at the people surrounding you. Who else this person is invited? And none are faces you recognize. 
They're of varying ages, though definitely none older than their late 20s, maybe early, early 30s. And like I said, none that you've partied with before. They're all dressed, though, various different ways. Some certainly seem like they come from money, and some might be as poor as you, at least the way they present themselves. Whether it means they don't give a shit or they truly like lacking money, you're not sure. But it definitely seems like a smattering of different folk. Eventually, an elevator reaches the basement and the door is open, and you're greeted with a familiar-looking place. Standing there, though, outside of the elevator is not only just Mr. Larson, as you've been introduced to before, but a familiar-looking hoodie that stands just behind him, with those dog ears hanging low. Drago pushes out first and waves everybody to follow along. He looks to Larson like, get the stuff? And Larson just smiles. Yeah, of course, man, I got it. His head in the back, cleared enough space. How much time do you guys need? Drago just smiles. When I'm done, I'm done. Understood? Larson just gives him a furrowed brow and he's like, know your place. Understood? And then Drago gives a kind of an awkward grimace before he's like, yeah, yeah. And moves and continues to move forward. Sean noting all of this as this goes down. And oddly, the others that you're with around, not seeming to care at all. All giggling and laughing and giddy of it all. But Sean's not paranoid. But Sean is, he's made it as far as he's had because he's been smart along the way. Mm -hmm. And hearing that conversation might raise a few hairs in the back of his neck. Does Sean react in any way to hearing these words spoken so openly? Yeah, I think he does a quick check over, like, are there any bulges in the, uh, like, trouser line of people? Like, do they have firearms? That sort of shit. Like, it's awareness, my boy. It's awareness. It's a little dark down here. You're a little nervous. Let's see if you catch any sight of any um, bulges. <laughs> <laughs> Not the ones he's interested in. Oh, that's two successes. That is two successes. <laughs> Sean, getting a little bit nervous, actually glances down. And it does seem that there's something rather large in the pocket of the Larson guy. You've seen, it's hard to know if it's a gun, but if it's a cell phone, it's bigger than any cell phone you've seen in 2010. Mm. Okay. Yeah, he's pretty sure this Drago's guy on the, uh, Drago guy is on the up and up. But he's... You've been around Heat before, too. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's just noting it for later if something stupid happens and he's got he's to get out or do something rash. So Drago leads the, the six of you all past um, both, both Larson and, and the, the young lady you saw prior. And as the, four, the uh, six of you pass by, it's not too long before Larson and then the young girl follow you as well, kind of picking and sandwiching between you, Drago up front, and them in back. You're led to the very far back where a bunch of boxes have been clearly moved out of the way. And as in the center, um, in, in the center of the room, a, uh, a bunch of candles have been piled toward the center of varying different heights. Only a few of them are lit and other ones aren't. And uh, Drago kind of stands over by it and he looks down and takes a smell. He's like, what is it, lavender? And he just cackles while Larson just kind of gives you like a, a sarcastic like, hey, hey, hey. As, as you pile in, he's like, stand around. This is the only light source we're going to have some psychedelics involved. I don't want your hallucinations to be tainted. I can handle some weird shit. Shoot me up with whatever you got. Let's do this. Okay, and as Sean eagerly kind of like, all right, fuck it, I'm all in now at this point, <laughs> Drago claps, and as a few others are like, hell yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm with this guy, yeah, let's fucking do this. A couple of them are a little nervous, and they seem like they're eager to step away. In fact, one uh, of the younger girls actually steps down and is like, I don't know, this is... I thought we were going to be partying, having drinks. This seems like, this is kind of fucking sus, you know? That's not a 2010 term. No. This is suspicious, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> One of us must be the Terminator. Right, yeah. Uh, this is, this is kind of weird. I don't, I think I want to go home. Drago stands and steps forward. Oh, don't be, don't be so silly. Just in. And nobody's going to get hurt here. Just enjoy it. I'm sorry. This is how things go. And Larson wants to make sure that everybody's on the up and up. And uh, it's just a thing. Enjoy it. And it's kind of become a ritual. You know what I'm saying? And there is a wits awareness roll, please. Sorry. Really should have spent more points in this. <laughs> you hear a slight giggle from the girl when he says that. Do you try to talk this girl in? She seems like she's not interested in staying. She actually keeps trying to push away. She's like, no, I'm good. I'm, I promise I'm good. Uh, can you just get out of here? And she's like, looks over to Larson. Can I? 
And Larson looks up to over to Drago, and then Drago looks over to Larson, and there's, you know, that beat of silence. Yeah, you've been in drug deals gone bad. You know when okay somebody who's not supposed to be doing something is starting to ask for it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I think he's like he clocks the the kind of uh, vibe of the room as it just like walks around, stands next to the guy, is like, "Hey, uh, how about you and I do this together?" And like he holds her hand and it's like, "Yep, be real easy." Like, I mean, Drago talks a big game, but it's going to be smooth sailing. Can I get a uh, charisma manipulation? Or no, no, I'm sorry. Manipulation persuasion check? You can. That is two. Two with just one ten? Do you want to reroll three? Yeah, I think I probably should. Go for it. That's another two. With four total successes, you kind of look her in the eye and you're genuine. You're not trying to like coerce her, but it's not because you want her to have this amazing experience. Now it's because you've seen that look and you don't want this girl to die. And if this is just simply as just she can't leave this place until she gets in on the drugs because she needs to have blackmail to be held over her, whatever gets her to the next night, that's all you care about right now. You don't want to mm. watch an innocent girl die. And after a few beats and, and talking about doing it together and, and looking her in her eyes genuinely, that fear turns into reluctant acceptance before she grips your hands as well. She's like, yeah, okay, I'm sorry. I'm just scared. I've never been in a place like this. I just feel so out of place. It's just, and Drago actually heartily chuckles after, after there's that agreement and the, both of his hands from behind clasp your shoulder. And he gives you kind of like that, that hard, like rub. And he's like, I knew there was a reason you were asked for. And he looks back. Oh, she likes you. Who doesn't? Yeah, that's my boy. Couple claps again. Stand around the candles. The lights are going off, and I don't want you bumping into shit and knocking shit over. I need to see all of you. And he kind of lets go and pushes both of you over to the candles. There's a, you watch as Drago makes a motion to the girl, and the girl actually walks over to a nearby room where she pulls out that wooden crate. It gets dragged out and then lifted before brought over to the entrance of the room, and Drago walks over and starts popping it open. Inside... You see there's clearly some papers or maybe even some books in there. But he actually pulls out two little plastic baggies that are bound up to each other with an elastic band on both sides. And he's like, he pulls it out and he waggles it in front of him as it stands up. And he's like, ah, yes, this is. And he looks over to uh, the young girl and hands it over to her. And she never really lifts her head. She keeps it low and just brings it under her hood. And then she lifts it up and you can see her give a very vigorous nod. And he's like, excellent. And puts the, uh, the top back on the crate pulls off the elastic bands with a hearty snap and unravels both of the plastic baggies before little pills are unloaded into his hand. He starts counting them all out and looks over to you. All right, that seems about it, the last of the bunch. And he heads over and starts handing each one of you a pill into the palm of your hand. Sean takes it and just kind of looks at it and looks at the girl and it's like, see, it's tiny, can't do anything. And like uh, holds her hand again. You hold it up and do you actually get it? Do you try to get a good look at this thing? Do you like shake it around to see if it's powder in there? Because you've done pills that have had different kinds of substances. Yeah. Do you hold it up to the candlelight and like just to see if you can see inside? Yeah. He's, he's going to figure out what it is. As you look, bring it up to the candlelight. You actually realize it's, it's a very like dull pink pill that as you hold it up to the candlelight is actually see-through and it's like plastic capsule. Mm. And as you shake it to see if it's actually some sort of dust or some sort of powder, there is no shaking noise. As you tip it though, you can actually see a little bit of what looks to be some sort of viscous liquid on the inside. Hmm. A drop, maybe, of whatever it is. Maybe it's some sort of concentrate uh, of, you've seen THC concentrate before, and a drop of that will get you fucked, so. Yep. But that's what you see as you kind of hold it up. He finishes handing out the pills to all seven, or all six of you, rather. He looks at him and he's like, I'm sorry, no author, can you do it dry? And he just smiles. Ugh. <sighs> What happened to the luxury, Jargo? Luxury is after I know you guys can handle my shit. He just turns to the girl to the right of him. The girl's looking at you the whole time. Her eyes have not broken with yours since she's gotten the pill. And she's mostly waiting to see what you do. He puts it to his lips and waits for her to do the same. She mimics it clearly as you're waiting. She follows it up and brings it right to her lips. See you on the other side just pops it in swallows there's a moment where she like clearly has to fight her own best instincts here and she just as she sees you do it and you didn't instantly die she follows suit throws into the back of her mouth and just closes her eyes and 
She brings her hands up to her face and <laughs> clenches them in a fist and shakes them while she quickly forces herself to swallow it. And she takes a deep, <gasps> just to see, and she looks around. She's like, oh, okay. After everybody's clearly taken it, Drago um, brings out a few pillows and he just tosses them around. Take a seat, get comfortable. You'll feel something in a little bit. I want you to enjoy yourselves and you don't need to be standing. Don't need anybody cracking their heads as they fall over because they're seeing some great big titties in front of their face and they don't know what to do. And he starts cackling. <laughs> as uh, the pillows lay the line about, Sean and we see every, uh, Sean and the girl and whatnot kind of sit around and take their seats. Do you ask for this girl's name? Yeah, he's, he's going to sit down like cross-legged, just kind of lean and be like, so what are you in here for? What's your name? She giggles for a minute as there's a momentary moment of panic, and she's like, oh, oh, my name's Jan. I haven't known Drago for a long time, but uh, I've known a few of his, uh, his buddies. Uh. Same. Like, uh, he just kind of turned up, yeah. invited me to a party, and then, it, I mean, it was the best night, so. Oh, you actually got invited to see for me. We were, I was already had a party, and he showed up with just stuff, and he kind of just joined, and it was just like a good time. Oh, he kind of, she just scrunches her eyebrows. I think it was, I mean, I remember having a good time. It was, you know, a blur. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I remember what I saw, but it wasn't real what I saw. So it's. Yeah, no shit. No shit about that. Yeah. <laughs> and she actually does uh, kind of drop a, a little giggle there for a minute. Clearly able to relax. And when she, it's almost though she realizes she laughs and she catches it. And then that, that look of a uh, little anxiety crawls back across her face. How long do you think before we start feeling anything? Uh, d depends on what it is. So it uh, could be anything from like two minutes to ten. I don't know. Can I just say how irresponsible this is? If you're going to put somebody on some sort of freaking hallucinogenic trip. Don't put candles around. Yeah, or, or you know, um, prepare somebody mentally. If you're going into a trip afraid, it's going to affect your, your shit, man. It's, uh, it's one of those things like... If it's an initiation, he'll, he'll like put you in whatever mindset he wants. Like there's these, so I heard about, uh, I never tried it, peyote. They have these like circles and then there's this big fire, people smoke it. And then like you do this meditation thing. It's not really anything like what I do at the flat, but. That sounds what, and as she goes to say the word wild, she actually stops catches herself not though she wants to her eyes actually start to widen she goes oh 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 and her eyes go wider and wider and that trying to get the w out starts turning into a gurgle and her eyes begin to roll into the back of her head and as she again goes to try and say something you're not entirely sure what instead of a word board bursting forth red blood trickles over her lips through her teeth as she bears them coming through and pouring down the corners of her face her head lifts up for a minute and you watch as the blood goes down her cheekbones under her chin and on her neck into her clothes she coughs and it just begins to spurt upward as you look around to see what's going on all the others seem to just be watching her not you not worried just stoically eyes on her there's a moment for a minute where you snap back and look to her but as as you look to the crowd and then look back to her she's no longer gurgling upward instead she's on you her hands are on your shoulders she's leaning over you eyes into yours the gurgling continues to uh, spurt her forth but instead of the blood pouring down her neck it's pouring onto your face Ugh. into your eyes and your nose as you reach up and try and wipe it away but her eyes are not leaving yours wild you can see the whites in her eyes as her uh, pupils are completely dilated no longer is she clearly trying to get words out all she's doing is keeping her mouth open as she coughs and gurgles there's a moment as you try to pull away, as you wipe the blood away, but as you close your eyes and wipe it away and you open your eyes again, she's right there looking at you and she simply says, that sounds wild. <laughs> Fuck. You want to know what wild is? She looks to you for a minute as you kind of break into like this weird laughter. Everything okay? Are you feeling it? Does it feel good? He's just going to take his hand and like wipe it across her mouth and show it to her. As you wipe it across her mouth and then show it to her, you look, there's nothing on your hand. There's no blood on her face. As you look back to her, she looks completely fine and she looks confused. <laughs> as you look around, everybody's back to doing their talking again. It's as though 
nothing happened. I... It is. She actually like leans in over, to, like really close to you as she looks at your eyes. What does it feel like? I don't feel anything yet. Doesn't feel like anything. Kind of saw you spitting up blood. There's a moment where she looks absolutely horrified when you say that. She sits back now, no longer inches from your face, but now back to where she was in her sitting position. Oh no. Oh, please, I hope it's not bad shit. That's just what I saw. My hand's clean. That's... That's so weird. I feel like... Pretty clear. I guess... It hasn't hit you, that was me? She shakes her head and then her gaze... Drifts from you back to the candles. She goes silent. Sean kind of sits there and either waits for her to reply or sees if anything happens. The candles continue to burn and the light conversation of the crew behind continues for seems like minutes. Then she turns back to you. She looks to you with more determination on her face, the concern gone. She scooches a little closer, the knees now touching your knees. Do you feel it? I'm guessing I don't. No, 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 not. And she actually leans closer now, her, her voice much more, it's so close to a whisper. Barely can you hear her, uh, her voice being audible as you lean in as well. And she reaches forward and just kind of presses a finger right in uh, where you're, right the center of your ribs. And then draws a line down to your stomach before she kind of gently pushes. No, do you feel it? And as she gently presses on your stomach with her finger, <clears throat> there's a sudden burst of rage that you feel crawl across your entire being. How dare she touch you as your eyes kind of furrow into an anger? How dare she provoke you? How dare she question you? How dare she make you nervous of this place? How dare she take a good time and make it your responsibility to babysit someone like her? Snapping off her finger and ripping her neck open is the only thing you think is, is suitable for ruining a night like tonight. Drago is nobody to fuck up. To have a night like this taken away because you have to babysit pisses you off. But that feeling is gone instantly as her finger comes back from your stomach and you're not entirely sure why those thoughts trickled in. Yeah, he like probably jerks his arm because he's going to just slap away her hand and like shout fuck. So, but all he gets out is a... Pfft. And as you and slap the hand, it's audible. Everybody's kind of chatting at a low murmur, but kind of in a reaction, or you catch her forearm with your backhand and create a lot, very audible. That kind of breaks the silence and the chill mood that apparently everybody else is having, except for you. It's, she actually scurries back and stands up, and she's like, What? What? what the f Come on, man, I thought this was supposed to be okay. And, and she, gets a, she starts getting a little nervous. The people stop talking and start looking up, and before things get too bad, not Drago that walks in, but the man who called himself Larson. He steps in and begins to speak, whoa, 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 what's going on? And she just kind of points you out. He fucking hit me. He hit me. I don't know what you're, what you're seeing, but come on, man. You said you, and she just looks at you. You said you've done shit like this before. Yeah. Yeah, I have. But this is new. I don't, I don't know. It's, hey, uh, I'm sorry. I'll calm down. I apologize. Sit next to me. I won't do it again. It's at this point around the corner. He wasn't in the room. Drago actually walks out from whatever room he was in before. The young girl actually following shortly behind him. He uh, looks in. Hey, what's going on? And Larson kind of explains what just happened. He looks up. All right, sweetheart. You come with me. We'll make sure everything's nice and calm for you. And he actually ushers the girl away. Oh, uh, no. It, it was me. Come on. It uh, was he holds his hand up. I know it was you. Chill. He sends her away. As uh, after you hear some, um, some shuffle and eventually an elevator door open and close. And, and Drago then eventually looks back to everybody else. Everybody continue. Enjoy it. And the rest of you seem like you have been having a good time. Except for you, shithead. Get up. <laughs> Come here. He points at me? Yeah, he points at you. Oh. Man, I failed already. Just keep your mouth shut for a minute and come here. I was pretty... Uh, yeah, okay. Come on. Eventually, as you mumble your way into the hallway, you're actually walked with Larson on one side, Drago on the other, and the girl behind you. 
you're led to the elevator as well. And the doors roll open. Only you, Larson, and the young girl step inside. Drago steps in just to press the button of the 36th floor before he steps out and gives you a wave. I'll see you later night, kid. And he walks out. The door is shut, leaving you kind of in this awkward elevator ride with these two people. Yeah, so, and Larson kind of, to soften the mood, speaks up. Uh, sometimes the shit doesn't really work well with some others. Receptors, something in the brain chemistry. And people have varying reactions. Sometimes they can be violent. Most of the time, people have a good time. Sorry, kid. Your brain just ain't made for that shit as he taps you on the back of the head. It ain't anything personal. We're just gonna... Well, if you want to be real, we're just gonna give you a bunch of fucking weed. You're gonna chill here for the night and we'll send you on your way in the morning. Shit. I'm not gonna get a call back from Drago, am I? <laughs> There's a little bit of silence and, he's, and he just says, Sorry about that, bud. Ain't nothing personal. Was it something I said? No. No. The drugs just don't sit well with you, that's all. That's weird. What was it? He actually kind of spins you around with a, and then gives you like a really? You want me to tell you what the hell he gave you? I can't tell you that shit. Secret sauce. Okay, fine. fine. Secret sauce. Yeah, consider it like that. Sorry about that again. You'll have a good night, though. Send you on your way and uh, make sure you get enough to uh, enough compensation to keep this place tight-lipped. Got it. <laughs> I mean, I'll remember what I saw for the rest of my days. That's what I'm aiming for, you know? But Larson continues to, to laugh along with it. And he's like, of course, no, I'm not saying that we want you to forget any of this shit. But uh, we don't want you telling any people where or what this place is. So I'm going to give you a welcome to doing drugs with the successful people in New York. And he smiles. Enough compensation to make sure you live a nice, happy life for a little while. Or at the very least give you some good nights partying before you run out. That second one. You do what you will with the money. It's not our decision. And he just chuckles. <laughs> it's weird for Sean. You've been to a lot of drug deals, a lot of parties with people who are packing heat or people who mm -hmm. claim to be way richer than they are, or maybe they are that rich and they just prefer it. Never once have you been part of an event where people pay you to be quiet about the place. No. This is, uh, this, everything about this has clearly struck Sean in a very awkward way, but he seems to be making out on, on top here. Even if he's not allowed back in Drago's, either to Drago's parties, they're saying they're about to pay you a few grand at the very least, and that's got to be kind of exciting. But eventually the, the elevator reaches its destination and the doors roll open, and unlike the floor before, this isn't an open floor plan. This is a uh, mostly conference room business area and you're brought into the far back in one of the more private conference rooms that has been retrofitted to be some sort of dormitory. It's not like somebody threw a sleeping bag in an office floor and said somebody sleeps here. Genuinely, it looks like somebody turned this place into a place where people can go take a nap after a long day of work or if they're going to be spending the night here to work early in the morning. You're brought in into there and uh, kind of just he's just kind of gives a, ge a general gesture to the bed and whatnot. It says this is uh, where you're going to be spending the night. We hope you. Uh, Enjoy your luxurious hotel. I know it ain't wild or nothing, but I'm sure it's better than what you're used to. Yeah. Looks comfy enough. Uh, Larson, right? He kind of just points. You got a kid. What's, what's a guy got to do to get a job around here? <laughs> oh, you're funny. You know everybody finds their way here in their own track. There's no... Listen, you want to get on this? You got to work your way up from the ground floor up. That's what I've been doing. I've got my own corner. You were specifically requested, funnily enough. It's weird that it's, un it's, it's unfortunate that the drugs didn't work well on you. He takes some, there's a moment of, of pause in what he was saying as he fiddles with his own fingers. The drug's still in you. It's not a lost cause yet. You know, we have a theory. Yeah? We're no doctors, of course, but we've been running around these, uh, we've been running with these people for a long time. We know what adverse effects can look to look for and usually what to look out for. We have a theory. Yeah, you got a little out of line downstairs, there's no doubt about it, but we think that there's not necessarily that it's a bad let me go and cut myself off. You don't care about the nitty gritty. 
What if we up the dose and see what happened? <laughs> we'll keep you up here. We won't put you downstairs. But what if it's just not enough? You're the third person now. I don't know if she wants to wait anymore. Not enough? I, I, was, I was made for too much. <laughs> he smiles widely. <laughs> I'll go ask. I just know she's getting impatient and another week or so of waiting could be problematic. And it's not like you completely lost your shit down there. You didn't rip anybody's throat off or anything. She poked me. I got a little... Yeah, it happens. Angry. It was, but like, it was gone. It's like, whew, weird. I mean, we, we, we try to be a little cautious. Anything, anything, anything like that pops up. We try to pull them out of the group just in case, but you stay right there. You're interested. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you stay right there. And he actually scurries off, leaving the door wide open. You hear the elevator open and shut and travel off. You're going to be left alone for about 15 minutes. Yeah. Sean's just going to walk around the floor, like doing what he did when he was down in the basement, like looking around. But mostly he's thinking to himself like, OK, two options here. Either I just avoided getting myself shot in the back of the head while I was like completely and utterly out of my mind on stone uh, on weed or um <laughs> yeah or i got myself into some kind of weird drug cult either way i should be selling this by the end of the week easy after 15 or so minutes pass you hear the doors open again and do you did this so sean to stay in the room or does he like wait out uh, there he, he walks minutes? around but like he goes back to the room eventually sure the doors open as you're making your way back in but this time instead of just larson larson and the dog-eared girl are there he smiles again to you, but this time there's uh, it's dark circles under his eyes after some time have passed, and he actually reaches out with just a single pill between his index finger and his thumb. Last one we could scrounge up, and she, he looks over to her, right? She nods very quietly. Uh, she nods very subtly, rather, as she reaches, as he further pushes it. Ain't gonna force you, but uh, if you're in for a fucking ride and to see what happens. Seeing what happens is my middle name? Whatever, give me the thing. As he reaches forward, he places it into your hand. Do you just pop it? Yep, straight. Okay. You pop it back again, swallow it. But you're not given a lot of time. Immediately something feels off because Larson and the girl step through the door, shut it behind them, and she stands kind of in front of it as Larson loses the air of jovialness in front of in his face and looks to step straight out uh, aggressively toward you. He drops all pretense of friendliness before he reaches into his pocket and pulls out the piece that you thought he was carrying in the first place. Mm -hmm. He jams it into your stomach and says, not a fucking word, understand? Just, Sean just puts his hands up. He bears a grin, and you watch as his smile changes in front of you. From the tops of his teeth, pointed teeth slide out from the gums very slowly, covering the front of what would be normal chompers, more or less. Two short, relatively short, pointed teeth stop right after they cover the initial ones. I don't know what Sean's face is when he sees that, but he's not given much of a chance before everything goes dark. He launches his head to your neck, and you actually see as the young girl lifts her head up, and for the first time you see a face of bicolored hair and what looks to be a tattoo on her lips or something. Her eyes meet yours before the feel of ecstasy completely covers your entire body and you are thrown into darkness. But where most would only see darkness here as they are given the kiss and drained for food or otherwise, something else happens to Sean. It's not just darkness he's greeted with. Instead, the darkness is quickly borne away and we actually can see Sean standing amongst nothing for mere moments before the sounds of countless people fill the area around him in the void. And as he stands in this empty nothingness and as the cacophony of few voices fill his ears, whatever ground beneath him he was standing on plummets and disappears and you are being grabbed by countless hands covering your mouth and your eyes and your face around your hands and your wrists before, as we watch Sean falling, his entire body becomes that blackness as those dark abyssal hands are reaching and pulling down. A burning feeling is all you can feel on your skin. If it is even skin, it would be blistering forward. It sears. The burning is excruciating. It is the only thing that overcomes and one normal person would fall into shock. 
and go unconscious, but there is no going unconscious in this moment. I think Sean kind of remembers the words of Larson and is just like, go with it. And he starts, at least in his mind, he doesn't know what's happening outside of himself. He gen- generally doesn't, but he just kind of keeps like taking in big breaths and yelling with the voices. The moment Sean even goes for his first breath, maybe going for, uh, to just go with it and just go, the hands all clasp around your cheeks and your teeth and your jaw. And as you try to go to close it, it's actually kept wide open. And on top of the hands, other hands crawl forward, smaller ones that they fill into your mouth and claw their way to the back of your tongue and into your throat. Desperately do you try and breathe and scream, but you can't. You sit there suffocating, but never are you able to pass out. You continue to suffocate and feel that suffocation for an endless amount of time. It only stops for a moment when it all flashes away and your eyes very uh, drearily dart around. You realize you're still in the same room, but you're lying on the ground. Hunched over by your feet is the figure of Larson. He's He's pacing back and forth, muttering something to the figure that actually stands over your head. Now you can see her face so clearly, the stitched mouth the eyes wide, the whites of her eyes clear as she just eyes you, watching. Larson's saying something, but it's all a blur. It seems as though it's coming through the thick water or mud. You're not entirely sure the words that are he's saying, but she never breaks her stare from you. She looks as though she's looking straight through your very fucking soul, and it hurts to look at her. But anytime you try to look to Larson, your gaze is inevitably, inevitably drawn back to her. And as you stare at her that final time, her pupils dilate and it's as though they encompass you again and you find yourself burning and clawing and just going with it as sean would say every time he comes back they're in different positions but every time sean returns they're more unfamiliar to him until at one point you actually watch you watch as larson slices the stitches from her mouth she takes a deep breath and She might go to say something, but as her voice comes forward, you pass out again, endlessly falling. But the very last time you open your eyes, they're both directly next to you on their knees. She kneels on your left, and he kneels on your right. He says, are you goddamn sure about this? She simply nods her head, and he looks to you. I fucking fucked up, bud. It didn't work. Sorry. And they both kind of open their mouth, even if you wanted to go say something. And those fangs from both bear down on your neck and feast from you. And as they begin to feast, your eyes roll on the back of your head. The next thing you remember is waking up in the street somewhere. Headache. Your skin burns as the sun starts to rise a little bit. It's like too bothersome. You scurry to a nearby shadow. You try to remember what happened last night. You remember sitting in the chair and a knock at the door. But after that, you think your buddies just bought some drugs and it was some fucked up shit. You probably stumbled into the street and hell let loose. As you make your way over to a nearby dumpster as the sun kind of careens forward, there's a rustle nearby, some garbage bags over near an alleyway. And as you look over, a man who's got some ruffled black hair and a scruffy beard and khakis and a relatively boring looking white butt down shirt looks you up and down eh fucking hell friend you alright Bender you got some water yeah Bender yeah hang on a second he walks over to you and he leans down uh, like kind of at you and he reaches forward and aggressively just pulls your your upper lip up Ah. he examines your teeth for a minute and uh, he looks at you and he pulls back ah fuck (sighs) you're in a lot of trouble kid we gotta figure out who did this to you and fuck you fall under my purview. The hell are you talking about? Oh, I could die for this and you could too. He looks genuinely concerned. Hey, name's Larson. What's yours? Uh is Sean. Best. Hey Sean, best. Not my best day. This isn't gonna mean much to you right now. But your life ain't ever gonna be the same. I'm sorry. We'll find out who did this and uh, we'll make it right best we can. And I have, and he, he, he begins to walk, spouting things that make no sense to you. He turns to you and says, and uh, 
Listen, anybody that you used to talk to before, you have a cell phone? I just pat myself down. I probably lost it. Oh. You still have a cell phone in your pocket? Nope, it's still sitting there in your pocket. It's first time for everything. Uh, yeah, and he starts to flip through it and starts to scroll down to someone to call them. Larson reaches over and very quickly goes to snatch it. Would you like to make a, a dex reflex, uh, but a dex athletics, but at a penalty of a minus two because you're um in a bit of a bad spot? <laughs> uh, you have to beat one, two, three successes. Got three. Wow, you're actually able to hold on to the phone for or as he reaches forward and he tries to snatch it enough to knock it away from your from your. And he just motions, like, close that. Okay, you go, did I ask for water? He closes it and puts it back in his pocket. He, he nods, like, yeah, we're going to get you some water, kid. Listen, you got involved with some bad people last night, and we need to make sure you're safe. I mean this when I say your life is on the line right now, and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you get the seat tomorrow Shit. night, okay? Oh, uh, did I take something off someone I shouldn't? Yeah. Oh, I get like that. Yeah, you did. And he pushes you into the, into the nearby alleyway as the camera lingers by that some familiar dumpster. And as you walk away and we can hear some light conversation, the camera will pan to the sky, fade to black. And Sean's journey as a thin blood officially begins here. A sneak peek into a drug uh, party gone wrong. Thanks so much, Josh, for hanging out and doing this with me. Yeah, that was fun. I hope you have some questions now. I have so many questions, uh, but it's good to know that Sean hasn't changed in like in 10 years. <laughs> yeah, you just had a bit of a memory wipe done by somebody. No big deal. No big deal. Yeah, yeah. Nothing ominous at No, all. nothing ominous at all. It only, I think it only brought in one little thing, but yeah, you know, we'll see. All right, everybody. Patriots, thank you so much again for the support. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do a season two and give you a little sneak peeks into our coteries history and stuff. It's yeah. a blast to play with these guys. So any opportunity to keep telling stories is a good one. We'll be back next time with, I believe it's Vera's is the next one. So mm -hmm. uh, be eager to take a look at what that's all about next week. Goodbye. Thank you everyone. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.